It's really happening. It's happening. We've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this. This trailer. Oh my God. This trailer, House of the Dragon trailer, is so lit. And there is so much going on. So much to break down. So much to explain. But first, hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. So HBO Max dropped the long-awaited House of the Dragon trailer, and baby, we waited for this. Like, the diehards have been here, waiting since 2019 for this juice, and this trailer was everything I wanted to see. It, it just was, period. Like, it just gave all it came to give. Like, it was dark, it was dreary, it was emo as fuck, which is exactly what you would expect for, this, like, this time period in Westeros. It's the Dance of Dragons. Y'all, the dragons are dancing and everywhere the dragons dance, people die. But anyway, looking at the trailer, this time period in Westeros is about 120 AC. And I think based on the trailer and the information that we have from filming and news breaks and different articles, um, season one is going to be telling the events and the story that led up to the Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of Dragons. For some timeline context for my show lovers that didn't necessarily read the books, like I'm not even shaming you, babe, like you should read the books, but it's cool if you didn't, I got you. So the beginning of Game of Thrones takes place in 298 AC. House of the Dragon takes place 178 years before episode one of A Game of Thrones. House of the Dragon is like House Targaryen in their prime. But let's get into the juice. Like, let's get into the trailer. So the trailer opens up with Corlys Valerian saying... What is this brief mortal life if not for the pursuit of legacy? So let's chew on this for a minute because I think it's a superb quote from a superb man. It kind of sums up the story that's being told. A lot of these characters in this universe are on the pursuit of legacy. They're in pursuit of legacy. Like Tywin Lannister was a real big one in Game of Thrones. But in House of the Dragon, Corlys Valerian, like his legacy is almost unmatched. He's the sea snake. He's the Lord of the Tides. He made House Valerian the richest house in all of Westeros. His wife was a Targaryen princess, a dragon rider. They birthed a daughter, another dragon rider that married a prince and gave birth to his little baby princesses. Like, he had a son, another dragon rider that married a queen. He was loyal beyond measure. He explored more of the seven seas than anyone ever has. He's been to fabled lands, and his legacy is undying literally like undying like the man is just like fucking fabled at this point i bet he's saying this quote at like someone's funeral on driftmark name starts with a l ends with an a but back to the quote this is a story about legacy like that's what this story the story that's being told is about the targaryen legacy the fall of the most powerful dynasty that ever was and this fall this dance of dragons was like it started internally and it was totally avoidable and that's and that's one of the things that makes it so fascinating right you see this train crashing you see it coming to and all you can do is watch all you can do is watch so we have Rhaenyra at what looks like Dragonstone and I'm thinking like first of all I love Rhaenyra's look. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I love it. But I think this might be, you know, funeral attire. It's dark. But then again, House of the Dragons color, like uh, House Targaryen's colors, one of their colors is black. So I'm not going to read too much into this picture. And I'm thinking that this shot is Dragonstone as well. But I'm wondering, is it really Dragonstone or is it Driftmark? Because when I enhance it, I see this interesting looking gate thingy. And I don't recall that being on Dragonstone, but that could be on Dragonstone and I could just be bugging. But let me know in the comments if you think it's Dragonstone or if it's Driftmark. I mean, these islands, Dragonstone and Driftmark, like they're right next to each other. So they will likely look similar in landscape, but the castles themselves are vastly different. So we have Damon and next to him is Masaria, the White Worm, Lady Misery. If y'all don't want spoilers, like... I don't know what to tell you because I need to explain what's going on and how can I explain it without spoilers. 
basically, Masaria was putting that magical coochie on Damon, and Damon got her knocked up. And the Targaryen tradition is that a child would be like presented with a dragon egg, so they could have their own dragon. Like that dragon would hatch and shit. But Viserys was like, "Fuck out of here! Bring that egg back! Ain't no bastard getting no egg." And it looks like in this scene, Viserys has sent Sir Otto Hightower, the King's Guard, and even like the Maester. To retrieve the egg back from Damon, which, first of all, this ain't this ain't in the books. But second of all, Sir Otto Hightower is the reason this whole fucking Dance of Dragons is going on. He's Tywin part two, but like just not as smart. Because Tywin would have killed Damon a long time ago instead of like playing cat and mouse with positions and titles and secession. Like, I hate Sir Otto. It's like if you like him, you're probably not gonna like my channel anymore because I'm gonna like he just emits small dick energy and I just don't have room for any of his bullshit. Like I am not gonna look at the higher side of him and the purpose of him. Like, no. No. Fuck him. Anyway, we then get a shot of a dragon flying over King's Landing. I was trying to figure out you know, which dragon is this? Like, it's too... Like, to me, the dragon kind of looked gold. So I was like, okay, so is it Sunfire? Like, it's too soon to be Sunfire. But that then I did notice, like, this red on the wings. So I'm thinking it's Damon returning to King's Landing on the back of Caraxes. And when I saw it, I thought of this scene, and I think it's a scene from the fifth anniversary tourney at King's Landing. And here's the quote from the book. Yet one was there who wore neither green nor black, but rather gold and silver. Prince Damon had at last returned to court, wearing a crown and styling himself King of the Narrow Sea. He appeared unannounced in the skies above King's Landing on his dragon, circling thrice above the tourney grounds. But when at last he came to earth, he knelt before his brother and offered up his crown as a token of his love and fealty. Honey, this tourney is where it all goes down. It's the greens. It's the blacks. It's the green dress and the black dress. This is where the Targaryen factions got their names. I honestly think they may combine some of these tourneys that go down in House of the Dragon. Because we have to see Damon fight Christian Cole at Maidenpool. But are they going to do that separate? Are they going to like mash up some tourneys? We know we are getting the fight between Christian Cole and Damon because we've seen it in the teaser. Then, then we have the great Lord swearing fealty to Rhaenyra. I've said it like they had to include this and I felt like they had to include the great council of 101 and we're going to talk about that. But Rhaenyra was Viserys' firstborn child after some time and much pressure by Sir Otto's dumbass, Viserys names his daughter, his heir. I know Sir Otto was punching the air when his daughter had a son. I know, I know he was. When Aegon was born, Sir Otto had to be punched in the air. But anyway, from the book, here's the quote. In a lavish ceremony at King's Landing, hundreds of lords did obsedience to the realm's delight as she sat at her father's feet at the base of the Iron Throne, swearing to honor and defend her right of secession. So in the trailer, we get our first sighting of Rickon Stark. And there is a debate if they changed his name to Rickard because the subtitle says Rickard. It sounds like Rickon. Maybe they changed it to Rickard not to confuse you that this ain't the same Rickon. Like, how could you be confused? Do you even remember who Rickon is? Can you even name a few scenes with Rickon? Because I swear in Game of Thrones, nobody really gave a fuck about Rickon. They'd be like, Rickon who? Do you like if you casually watch Game of Thrones, do you remember Rickon? Anyway, so either way, Rickon Stark is Cragen Stark's father. Cragen Stark is the Lord of Winterfell during the dance. And we know how the North honors their vows. So needless to say, how Stark is on Rhaenyra's side. Ride or die. Death before dishonor. All that. Loyalty first. Da da da, you know, all those tattoos. Anyway, next we have Corliss Valerian swearing fealty, ride or die. We already know how that goes down. Corliss is going to ride or die with Rhaenyra no matter what. But then we have. 
Boriman Baratheon swearing fealty. And Borman would have supported Rhaenyra. Like, I'm pretty sure he would have supported Rhaenyra. He supported Rhaenys and he support well, he supported Laenor's claim. But Borman's son was Boris, Lord Boris Baratheon of Storm's End. And we know how flip floppy house Baratheon is. And I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, I said it. It's it's really not up for debate debate. Like House Baratheon is is a flip floppy ass house. Like like, like Look at Game of Thrones. Look at Game of Thrones. We literally had three crowned kings during the War of Five Kings. Renly, Stannis, and Joffrey. Wishy-washy as fuck. Need I say more? Yeah, the Iron Throne looks so good. Like, the throne room looks so good. All of it just makes me want to cry. Like, you should have seen my reaction on Twitter. I was just going off. Like, we've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this. We've been dying for this, actually. So we get a shot of Viserys with Blackfire, one of the two Targaryen Valerian steel swords. We have Rhaenyra. The realms of light looking godly as these old, hard, powerful men swear to die protecting her right to the Iron Throne, even though some of them don't. Um, but yeah, we get a shot of Big Zaddy Damon, and this is in his gold cloak days. Also, the wigs are giving. They're giving. With all the effects and stuff, I think they're giving. They don't look crazy like we saw those pictures because y'all y'all know those pictures looked crazy those leaked photos had them looking oh my god party city also y'all if you want the in-depth history on damon rhaenyra Cragen, corliss queen alicent i have a whole house of the dragon playlist but these are damon's gold cloak days damon used to be the commander of the gold cloaks which means we're going back so he was the commander of the Gold Cloaks till Sir Otto became scared of his power. Sir Otto's such a bitch. They also show us, like, some shots of the Gold Cloaks, like, doing house raids and shit. But then we get the reason why there was ever a Dance of Dragons to begin with. Rainies tells Rhaenyra, Men would sooner the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. This is going to be a powerful scene. Rhaenys Targaryen was the rightful heir, but at the Great Council of 101, she was passed over and they chose Viserys instead because she had a vagina. And yeah, speaking of the Great Council, it looks like we will be seeing that as well. And does that mean we're going to get to see King Jaehaerys? I hope so. So let's talk about the Great Council, but first let's talk about the scene with the painted table with Rhaenyra at Dragonstone looking at the painted table. It's the same table that Aegon the Conqueror used to take Westeros and Daenerys will use this table in the future as well. Rhaenyra has spent all of her time on Dragonstone brooding over that table like Stannis Baratheon. She is not about to let Queen Alicent, some up jump bitch from Old Town and, and her and her little half brothers usurper brothers take her shit she's not about to let that happen the whole shot is giving it's just giving the energy of this ain't happening not here not on my watch period point blank but one of my favorite shots so far of the trailer is the heron hall scene heron hall looks amazing when i seen it i immediately knew it was heron hall i immediately i was like oh my god they got the cavern they got they got it so book accurate and it looks actually like the drawing that i think his name is mark simonetti the one that does the world of ice and fire art it looks like hit like it looks like that like that whole scene it's packed in there it looks to me like the great council of 101 and um, the Great Council of 101, basically all the great lords gather in Heron Hall. So that means the Starks of Winterfell, the Baratheons, the, the Tyrells, the, the Targaryens, all of them everywhere gather in Heron Hall. Um, the River Lords, all of them. And they decide, you know, who's going to succeed King Jaehaerys on the Iron Throne. And spoiler. 
it's King Viserys, if that wasn't painfully obvious. But I definitely think this will be near, like, the beginning of the series. Like, we need to see this because this is, like, fundamental in to tell this story so we also get a shot of this trunk this trunk being carried down an aisle someone sitting on a throne or a high seat of some sort it still looks like heron hall um it could be dragon eggs like when i seen the, the trunk i, I thought of daenerys's dragon eggs immediately wedding gift but then i'm like why bring dragon eggs to heron hall like why I, i'm thinking that it could just be like some important scrolls important documents needed for the great council then we see queen allison like the younger version of queen allison i was wondering like is this her wedding but she isn't dressed extravagant enough in my opinion it's actually it looks like the five-year anniversary Turney, but she transitions into the older Allison. It's pretty, it's like a pretty dope transition, if I do say so myself. But first, she kisses her husband, King Viserys. He has this like book accurate crown, like so much stuff I've seen in this trailer is so true to source material. Like, I want to cry. I want to cry that people are actually putting together this series that give a fuck about the books, that actually care about the books like they actually want to protect the source material and like you know that just doesn't happen anymore a lot of times everything's all about the dollars and the cents and if it don't make dollars it don't make sense but you can make sense and dollars at the same time and i actually to my belief you'll make more dollars if it fucking makes sense I'm not even talking about season 8 of Game of Thrones site. Yes, I am. We have the scene of Sir Otto talking to his daughter. He's telling her, We play an ugly game, but you have the determination to win it. And tell me, tell me he doesn't sound like Tywin Lannister. He wishes he was Tywin Lannister. He's not. You're not Tywin. Have a fucking seat. Goodbye. There is a dragon egg. It's being warm for breakfast. I'm just kidding. A dragon egg is being incubated in the flames, which makes sense because Daenerys incubated her eggs in the sun and in the fire. But I do, I did think that that shot of Queen Alicent by the fireplace, I do think that she looks stunning. I have a good feeling about the scenes we are going to get with Alicent and Sir Otto. I do think they're going to remind us a lot of the Cersei Tywin scenes the Tyrion Tywin scenes yeah uh Sir Otto you have some big shoes to fill uh but anyway then we have the shot of the Valerians coming up in the place to be looking regal as fuck I think this is a wedding and you know weddings in Westeros just always seem to be a bloody affair so I wonder what's gonna happen at the wedding but we get a younger Damon with short hair Rhaenyra dancing with Laenor at which seems to be her wedding she's wearing white her hair is done up like Marjorie's when Marjorie married Joffrey and the realm looks to be celebrating which is interesting like that the trailer cuts to Driftmark a funeral on Driftmark now this looks like Lena's funeral everyone's dressed in black there's a sarcophagus this is where I think Corliss gives the legacy speech and Lena's death is the turning point for a lot of things. Lena's death is what allows Damon and Rhaenyra to marry, but it also frees up Vagar, if you know what I mean. So we get a shot of the HBICs, Rhaenyra, and Allison. Allison is with Christian Cole. Listen, Allison, she's a member of the Greens. She's the head of the Greens. You know, I do not like her i do not like the greens i think the greens are so fucking wrong no matter how you slice it but i'm telling you like the greens aren't just like bad people they're gonna make us like they're gonna make us love to hate queen allison just like cersei like you can dislike cersei and and respect the fuck out of her character and enjoy her character and still say like oh she's an awful fucking person yeah like jamie lannister and cersei lannister you know you know it happens anyway so this scene looks like a targaryen i was trying to figure out who it is so i'm like okay the hair targaryen but it looks like the younger daemon right from the earlier shot 
Uh, he's probably getting sent away by Viserys for being a pervy uncle. Um, next, we get a shot of bloody hands. And I'm like, okay, so are they swearing, like, some blood oath? We then get a close-up shot of Damon and Rhaenyra, which they are likely about to say I do because they are going to get married. Um, yeah. Spoiler, they're going to get married, uncle and niece. It seems like this trailer is kind of moving in chronological order. So then we get back to the like the other half of the first shot, which is Damon and Sir Otto in their like, beef, and Damon just pulling out Dark Sister on Sir Otto, which gave me the chills. We also get a very interesting shot of Queen Allison trying to stab Rhaenyra with the cat's ball dagger. Now, this is interesting because what if the blood hand that we see is actually Rhaenyra's from grabbing the blade. See, this is an intricate, like, this is some intricate shit. Because remember how Catelyn was trying to, like, save Bran from the same blade? It's kind of a similar situation. So, after Lena's death, Vagar is available to be claimed as a dragon. Because Vagar was the dragon that Lena rode. So, after Lena Lena died, Vagar needs a new rider. So Vagar is the biggest dragon in of all the dragons of House Targaryen. So Vagar is like the 2022 Bentley of dragons and she's up for a new lease. So Queen Alicent's son, Aemond, sneaks into the dragon pit while everyone is sleeping and claims Vagar, but Rhaenyra's sons are there and they wind up getting in a fight, and Lucaris, her second son, takes out Aemon's eye with a dagger. And Queen Allison is furious by this. Like, her resolution in the books is literally an eye for an eye. Like, she wants them to take Lucaris's eye. Like, the bitch is bugging. And Rhaenyra's like, I wish you would, bitch. I can't wait to see this in 4K resolution. Like, I can't wait for the... I cannot wait for August 21st. You know... It's going to be popping every Sunday. Anyway, we then see another dragon. It looks black. I'm wondering if it's like the cannibal or is it Vagar? It kind of looks like season four, season five Drogon. And it's Corliss saying history does not remember blood. It remembers names. More about legacy. But Damon looks scared. So I'm wondering what's going on here. So I'm wondering, is it? Vagar, like the relationship between Vagar and Damon has always interested me. No, Damon wasn't Vagar's rider. Lena was, but Damon and Caraxes spent a lot of time with Vagar because of Lena, because Lena was Damon's wife. And it makes like the whole God's Eye situation that much more depressing and sad. But I mean, this trailer to me was just off the charts. I loved it. I'm so happy. I'm still waiting on Winds of Winter, but, like, I don't know what the fuck George is doing, but, like, he's just gonna have to take his time because, like, now we have House of the Dragon and it's Team Black all day. Queen Rhaenyra, rightful queen. But let me know in the comments of what you want me to cover next. Check out my playlist for all of my other House of the Dragon content. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day.